Seriously, what's so great about the territories? Everybody talks about how great they were. I'm one of them. But let's put it to the test. I am the Will Gray, and this is a history lesson nobody asked for. Let's hop in the Wayback Machine and rewind the clock. Let's get some old stories over in 2024. Let's start at the beginning. One of my favorite stories in wrestling. Let's hop in the Wayback Machine, go back to 1982, Mid-South Coliseum, Jerry Lawler and Andy Kaufman. Now, before we get there, we have to kind of give some backstory, okay? Andy Kaufman found great success on the TV show Taxi. He was on Cheers. He had, you know, just blown up in Hollywood and on TV. So his next plan was, let's get into comedy. Let's do skit comedy, tour comedy, stand-up comedy. And he found himself doing a gimmick where he said he was the intergender wrestling champion. He was this huge, over-the-top, old-school territory hill, but he was only wrestling women. He would offer them a $1,000 purse, make it look like they were going to get the upper hand, and then just bury his opponent in the middle of the match. It was his thing, and it got over. Fans loved it. People loved it. Women kept coming in. It was a big hit. Now, one of the more important things to remember about the wrestling business in the early 80s, uh, this was when the WWF was still a thing. Yes, three W's. Uh, Vince Sr. was at the helm. He hadn't sold the company to his son yet. And uh, Coffin started shopping his, his, little, his little story. He wanted to put his, his thing on the road. He wanted to get out there. He wanted to do his thing. And he went to Vince Sr., Vince Sr. wanted absolutely nothing to do with it. He was like, no way, I'm not touching this. But one of the hottest territories in the Southeast at the point was the Memphis Territory. Jerry Jarrett, Jerry the King Lawler, they saw it as money waiting to be printed. The original plan, let's do a one-off. Have Lawler come in, have a match. You know, we'll put him over, we'll do the thing, get some butts and seats and be done with it. They could not expect how big this would blow up and become. After a couple weeks of having matches and doing his thing, you insert Foxy Brown. Lawler and Jarrett had the idea of putting an actual trained women's wrestler in there against him. At the time, she was one of the uh, women's champions for the Memphis Territory and the surrounding territories. At this point... Uh, Lof or Kaufman goes in, he does his thing with Foxy Brown, they have their match, uh, he, he almost gets taken over, she almost gets the purse, Kaufman ends up struggling, but he gets the win. Now, this is where Lawler steps in. Lawler steps in and says, look man, I think with some proper training, getting her back in there, showing her, you know, showing her the ropes, as it were, we think Foxy could beat you, bro. Like, we think Foxy could one-up you. So, Kaufman looks at him and he's like, fine, I'll take it. And I'll up the purse to $5,000. Then Kaufman sweetens the pot even more. Not only will he give her a $5,000 purse, he offers if Foxy Brown can beat him, he will marry Foxy Brown. Now this, everybody listening, this is one of my favorite lines ever cut in a wrestling promo. Foxy Brown says the line, I wouldn't marry Andy Kaufman if he was the last man on earth. So we get to the build, we get to the match, and in true Hill fashion, Andy Kaufman plays the big Hill. He takes Foxy Brown, he pins her, he pins her down, he starts rubbing her face in the mat, and now this is where it starts to get built up. Insert Jerry Lawler. Lawler rush ins. He would go in, he would go separate the two, he would start doing it. Kaufman cut a promo on Lawler and Brown. There was lots of hostility because Kaufman was kind of breaking kayfabe. He was getting out there and saying very real things. He made it look real, like Lawler had no point to be in that ring. This wasn't what we agreed to. I was supposed to wrestle Foxy, I did my piece, I was doing my thing. You jumped in here, and you made it personal. You shouldn't have been in that ring, Jerry Lawler. So after this, this is where it starts to become what some say is the first work shoot in pro wrestling, okay? Because everybody sees the hostility and the anger behind Andy Kaufman and Jerry Lawler. Kaufman would go out 
and he would just cut promos talking about, you remember me? I'm the big Hollywood actor who came to Memphis, Tennessee. He really laid into it. He kept kayfabe alive strong and well because everybody was convinced Jerry Lawler and Andy Kaufman hated each other. This whole spot was built up to the match. Now, leading up to April of 82, the 10,000 screaming fans, Mid-South Coliseum, Kaufman and Lawler would meet in secret. They would go into hotel rooms and they would put the mattresses down and they would work on the wrestling match in private away from everybody so Kaufman could get trained by Lawler on how to take the pile driver, on how to do a suplex, on how to do the things he was going to have to do for a real wrestling match. Lawler was training him in private to do it. Keeping in mind, everybody thought these two men hated each other. So you fast forward. April, we're there. Kaufman versus Lawler. The match itself, not a fantastic wrestling match. It's a standard match of a celebrity versus a great pro wrestler. That's what you got out of it. Inside the match, Kaufman did a great job overselling. Um, At this point, the pile driver was illegal. According to the Tennessee Athletics Commission, it was made an illegal move. Lawler not only hit Kaufman with a pile driver, but he hit it twice in the match. Um, this is where it gets real fun because Kaufman lays there, you know, unalived as a doornail, as they say. And the ref comes over to make sure he's okay. And Kaufman's like, call an ambulance and Lawler's no way, dude, that's thousands of dollars. We're not paying for that. And Kaufman says, I'll pay for it. So they have an ambulance drive into mid South, put Kaufman on a stretcher with a neck brace and haul him out. Everybody thinks Jerry Lawler just, you know, unalived a Hollywood star in the middle of the Mid-South Coliseum. So now, after the fact, Kaufman goes to the hospital. He sells it like a motherfucker. He's laying in the hospital bed, you know, near death, just dying to death. And the thing about it is, is that the whole time, the nurses and everybody else knew what he was doing. This man was paying out of pocket to sell the fact of what just happened with Jerry Lawler in Mid-South. He wears the neck brace. He goes through the whole angle. He builds it up. Then we get to it. The slap heard round the world. This is when, at the point, keep in mind, 82, 83, Starcade hasn't happened yet. WrestleMania 1 is still, you know, three years away almost. We're still in the very, the Wild West of the pro wrestling independent territories. David Letterman comes forward and says, Andy Kaufman's one of the hottest names in Hollywood, and he is tied up in this pro wrestling story. Let's get them on the show. Letterman has said himself, the night Lawler and Kaufman came on is what made him famous. The fact was Kaufman told Lawler to hit him. Lawler said no. I'm not going to. Kaufman begged and pleaded, said, it. no, we're not going to happen. I'm not going to hit you, not in a neck brace. So everybody went into the actual interview with Letterman thinking that it was just going to be the interview. He stands up, he looks at him, and he decks Kaufman right there on the stage in front of David Letterman, in front of a live audience on national TV. It went from a work to a shoot to a work, then a shoot again. This thing has been all over the place. And all the while, the only two people that realize it's a work were Andy Kaufman and Jerry Lawler. So, there you go. I don't know if that convinced you. It's a cool story. It's a lot of fun. And at the end of the day, I hoped I got an old story over in 2024. You know something like that.